even the animals that represent the forests of the world, they all rely on plants as well. So a lot of important things to learn about plant life. Now this home currently has a human in there, so I'll tell you one thing everybody, you won't see a human and a tiger in the same place, at least not for too long. So do be sure to revisit this area on foot. That's actually the home of our Malayan tiger. It looks like our care specialist got support going on though, so you know, don't worry about this too much. Usually don't see the tigers from the bus anyway, so again, little miss too much. Now do be sure to keep in mind though, everything we see on this tour together, you can revisit on foot. So we're gonna see a good portion of the zoo and just remember for every clean that we miss, you can go back. Now the Lost Forest is a very great trail though, all around the world, all major continents of Africa. We have hubs or conservation hubs, as we call them, and there are eight in total. And four out of the eight of those hubs actually just focus on forest. So definitely going to be getting some more forest friends along the way. Now we're switching it up, everybody, going into treetops this time. We got two different species in front of us. To the very right, those are the red-tailed hornets, and the ones in the center, those are howling swamp monkeys with the brown bodies all over. Now, both of the monkey species that live in here represent the African forest. So, Africa is a continent, and as a continent, it has the most number of endemic species of primates that you'll find anywhere else in the world in comparison of the continent. So Africa has about 70 primates that you'll only find out there in their natural continent range. So these lineage is specific. If you've ever heard of the Acacia woodlands, you can find them out there in Central Africa. If you've ever heard of a gorilla before, most of the gorillas of the modern times are only found in the Congo within the country of Cameroon. So cool things to get a learn about forests. Many of the popular animals that a lot of people know about are really tough. Uh, the more you know, I suppose. Now, red dots with numbers in the middle of them. There's a word around it that says map location, so I can only assume that it's a map of those. Asia passages to our right, though, marked by map locators number 15, red pandas, snow leopards, taki, and a lot of other cool animals live in that area. To the left, though, we got some noise over here from some very colorful birds. Does anybody know their names? Ooh, flamingos. You guys got it? Flamingos. Now, if it looks familiar to the so cool. birds we saw at the front plaza, these are the cousins of the African flamingo. So this is the American flamingo. Now, the two birds actually switched homes for a little bit because this is actually the African marsh aviary. So every single other bird you see in there is actually native to Africa. If you've ever heard of a duck before, there are many ducks out here in North America, but they are called the mallard ducks. So every other duck that we're seeing, they are not mallard ducks, but they're in Africa. Even out here in San Diego, if you've ever been to La Jolla Cove over the shores, you've ever seen those birds hanging out with the seals. We also have cormorants in the zoo that are from Africa. These birds are the best over there. Now these cats today represent the savannas of the Africa. That is their special hug. You remember that movie, The Lion King, that got very popular once upon a time in the 90s. And it did teach people a lot about the African lion and the savannas. If you remember that song, Circle of Life, it is a whole ecosystem out there, a whole biome. And it is very important to learn about how other areas of the earth are able to survive in their own unique ways. The road wildcats definitely enjoy their morning naps. And we'll go on for it. We're going to see who's over here. Who's oh, right about here. Those of you above me currently look down up to that cat tower. You can see a spotted cat laying down. That is a jaguar. Oh, really wants to be. Uh, Ooh, yeah. The direction. Just keep looking to the right on the Pretty cool. Down there. Go for it. I know those of you upstairs kind of hard to see her through the trees, but try your best. Now our jaguar in theory, she is a direct representative of the Amazon forests of South America. So that is the only place in the world today where you will find a jaguar in the wild, essentially. Now only 200 years ago, the last time a jaguar was sighted in San Diego County was in the 1820s. So yes, they used to be as far north as San Diego. But because of deforestation and poaching, they were pushed farther and farther down south past Mexico. Past Central America, the Yucatan, and to South America, where they're only found today. So 
it's really important to learn about deforestation because that is the number one cause of endangerment for all life on this earth, humans included, direct effects and indirect effects included. So remember, for animals like King Gary, as well as for ourselves, a very important concept to learn about are reforestry and sustainability. So sustainability as a word is defined as making progress in the modern times without jeopardizing the needs of the future. So reforestry is a great effort embodying that because we are making progress with the future by planting seeds today so that hopefully the generations that come after us will be able to benefit from what we planted. So for anybody with a kid, imagine that, a little animal. It is very important to think about these things because it's not just adults in this world. There are plenty of babies out there that are just trying to grow up and, you know, trying to be a positive influence on them. And just remember, even elephants are herbivores, so they also need the help. This building on our right is for the elephants that live here. It's called the Care Center. If you get lucky enough when you're walking around today, you will see our care specialists interacting with the elephants in there. So some people, you know, we should have come back here later on. Now keep your eyes down to the ground though, a little break from our elephant search. We got some birds over here. If you remember Zazu from the Lion King, that is a Vonderbeck's horn bill flapping around towards the glass. And this bird closer to us, next to the cactus, are actually a secretary bird. So both of these birds represent the savannas of Africa though. Secretary birds are actually one of two birds on this earth that have learned to use their feet as weapons. So even though they're a bird of prey, like an eagle or a hawk, they Look at those wild birds and elephants. They also still take things to them. So they're very interesting birds. Those hornbills that you're seeing, those are very great. Example, bird life. Because a lot of people know about Zazu, but they didn't know he was a hornbill. But now, everyone, it looks like we finally got some views of some elephants. I'm going to try to get you guys into perfect position and say hello to the boys at Epo and Sun Tzu. So this is the bachelor's herd of our elephants here. Even in the wild, elephants do base their groupings upon gender. When the boys turn about 9 to 10 years old, they'll break off and form their own bachelor's herd, either with their bros or their friends. And for the ladies of the matriarchal herds, the mamas and their daughters are practically spent most of their lives together. So it's a pretty cool thing to learn about how animals also socially function. Now these two on our right hand side though, they're the youngest members of our elephant herd. They're only 12 and 13 years old. Nepo with the two tusks, he's 12. Sun Tzu with the one tusk, he's 13. And both of these elephants were also born up north at the San Diego Zoo Safari Park. So if you've never heard of that place before, that's our sister organization up north of Escondido, 30 minutes from where we are in the future, because they knew that they wouldn't live long enough to benefit from these trees. But thankfully, their actions carried on into the future, and now here we all, all here we all are talking about those people. So just remember, our lives are very much the same. All of the positive things we all do collectively will create that positive world for our children. So we want to make sure to watch out for the next gen making sure they're always in our thoughts and our actions. And to the left, if you've never seen a statue of a bird like that before, this is the official start of the Africa Box Trail. And that hope with the pool is for the one and only South African penguin of the zoo. So unlike the penguins of Happy Feet, these penguins are more like the guys from the movie Madagascar, directly in their mother's house. So it's a very different life that and those that we lead as families. If you'd like to learn more about those koalas, you want those better views up close and personal, urban jungle to the right is where that's going to happen. That's so where our giraffes, cheetahs, hippos live. To the left, one of my favorite gardens, that's a beer garden right there. A little bit too early to make the visit though, but check it out later on. Now to the left though, French Street Trail right here. Other famous Australian animals like Tasmania doubles, wombats, Cooper birds, find them along that trail. But now as we come across this next bend, everybody, this is the official end of our tour. I'd like to thank you all for being here with us again, because if you didn't know, we are a non-profit organization. And what that phrase means is that each and every single dollar that all of you spend here is directly reimbursed to the conservation efforts we make in San Diego, and in turn all around the world. Without your presence in this zoo, we would not be able to do what we do, so thank you all so much again just for being here. Now, if you'd like to learn more in your 
all time, sdzwa.org is the best place to start. Information on every single animal that lives here can be found online. We also got a lot of resource links if you want to learn more about conservation and sustainability and how you can apply it to your own life. Just a quick heads up to the upper level, I'm unloading lower first, so just sit tight, I'll be right there. One last time, my name's Kay Cola. Thank you all for starting your day off with me on the tour of us. I hope you guys had some fun, and I hope you all enjoyed the rest of your day. Thank you again.